This is Ed Peterson. And this is John Kiltica. And this is the High Gain Podcast, John. Oh, man, the High Gain Podcast is so podcasty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where are you recording from right now, John? I am in beautiful West Seattle, Washington, in a basement. Okay. Tell me about the weather there. Oh, it's clear, sunny. It's like they flipped the switch and it's summer. How about you? I am in sunny Palm Springs, California. Right now, it's 1230-ish, and it is 108 degrees. Swell. We're heading into 112 today. Nice. I don't know if I believe the forecast for a week from today, but next Sunday, it's supposed to be 118. (laughs) (laughs) What are you doing, dude? 118. You should start doing experiments. Set stuff out in the sun and watch what happens. The back patio area where we're at is black tile. So I think I'm just going to start cooking all my food on the tile. Pepper and waffle, the pug and wiener dog. Yes. We had to order them the little booties that you put on so they don't burn their feet. You don't want your dogs burning their feet? No. Beverages. Yes, Ed. Oh, that was some uh, 99 Luft balloons. Yeah, that was me singing in German. I suppose that was pretty good. I don't know. Yeah. Do you have a beverage, John? Do I have a beverage? Yeah. I've got an Ed beverage. Ooh. I got a Orca beverage. Oh, my goodness. This is the Lemmy Sparkling Lemonade. Delicious. With real lemon juice. Do you recall the slogan, Ed? I don't know. Let me have a Lemmy. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You know what I got? No, what? I got a Mountain Dew Kickstart. A Mountain Dew? What the hell is that, Ed? It's an energizing black cherry flavored sparkling juice beverage from Concentrate with other natural flavors. I don't even know who you are anymore. Pure big corn. Oh, the worst. Well, how is it? It's clearly an energy drink thing, but it's kind of gross. Is there anything even resembling a slogan? It says, uh, with just the right amount of kick. (laughs) Second ingredient? What? High fructose corn syrup. (sighs) Fuck. We're going to Germany today, Ed. I'm probably okay with going to Germany. I think that's fine. They're probably in better shape currently than we are. Oh, certainly. Yep. Mexico is closing their border, not letting Americans in. From Seattle here, you want to take a quick jaunt up to Vancouver? Nope. That whole build a wall? Yes, keep us in. Protect the world from us. (sighs) An eight ounce cup of coffee, John? Yes. Has 95 milligrams of caffeine. And this is a 16-ounce bottle of Mountain Dew, and it only has 92. That is some bullshit right there. Yeah, I was expecting this to be like 19 cups of coffee or something. What the hell kind of energy drink is that supposed to be? Leave it to big corn to pull the wool over your eyes like that. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. There's a dude. His name's Fred. Okay. Fred Wilfer. Okay. Born in 1917 in Schoenbach, Germany. 1917 Germany seems like not a great time to be born. Maybe not the best time to be born. Coming out of one world war, going into another, you're going to take the double L's. The double L's. Loss, loss. Yeah. Start a couple of fights. And lose. Lose both of them. Couldn't have been too good because that town, Schoenbach, yeah. no longer exists. What do you mean? It's now called Luby, and it's in what is now the Czech Republic. Okay. But back then, when our man Fred was born, it was all in one piece known as Schoenbach in a region called Franconia. Okay. And they were well known for stringed instrument manufacture. 
Cool. A lot of luthiers just sort of clumped together there in Schoenbach, making violins, maybe the occasional zither. Yeah. So our man Fred, that's where he was born. That's where he grows up in and amongst the elite of German stringed instrument manufacture. Mm -hmm. And that's the backdrop, Ed. And then World War II happens. God damn it. It's a bummer time. It's a bummer time with the bullets and the shooting. Uh, Post-World War II, they got a little bit of a problem. Okay. All these places where Germans used to live are getting carved up amongst the winning powers. This area where our man Fred lives goes to the Russians, and they reconstituted Czechoslovakia with it. Right. So now Fred and all his stringed instrument manufacturing brethren, they have to split because the Russians expel them. Okay, why? Imagine you have won this territory and you are now going to call it Czechoslovakia. Do you want a whole bunch of fucking Germans living there? Maybe not. So you kick them out. They just said, like, you're gone. Yeah, you lived here when it was Germany. Now it's not. Get out. Get out. Our man Fred Wilfer quickly gets with Erlangen, Germany. Erlangen. In the Franconia region and says, hey, what if all our luthier dudes came there? Okay. Erlangen was like, let's do it. And they did. So Fred is at the forefront of helping to resettle all these cats in central Germany. He establishes shops. He helps people find housing. He sets them up making instruments. And so this area now becomes where all the hip instrument making is happening. I'm super into it. This is 1946. He starts his own company. He starts Framus. Okay. I have no idea what kind of guitar you're holding. I mean, I think now I know what you're holding. I'm holding a Framus guitar, Ed. Knowing that the guitar is a Framus actually gives me almost zero information. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. This particular one is a Strato Super. It was, it was made in the late 60s. Oh, cool. Okay. And it is more Stratty style, more kind of offset y Stratty style. Okay. Two single coils. Okay. One volume, two tones, and two sliding switches to turn the pickups on and off. Cool. If we were to do that thing we do, Ed. Walk the tone. How bridgy can I get? I'm going through the 1981 Inventions DRV pedal. You know I love that pedal, John. I know you love that pedal. That's how bridgey I can get. Love it. Let's see how necky I can get. Necky. That's pretty necular. Sure. Let's turn them both on and see if I uh, combine them. That's pretty good. I like that. Yeah. Last but not least, I turn off that DRV, so here's a clean, unadulterated... <laughs> Is that both again? This is both, yeah. As I mentioned, Stratocaster type shape, rosewood fretboard, two single coil pickups. There is a pickguard on here that's unusual shaped. It is a plastic pickguard that has a really cool look to it that's like, uh, I don't even know what you would call it. Root beer colored, tiger eye kind of sparkly. It's sparkly? Not actual sparkle. Okay. I don't know how to describe it. It's very, very nice. Yeah, it's like tiger stripey kind of pick guard. Yeah. I'm looking at a picture. I looked it up. Yeah. And the bridge on it is... Regular old bridge, but the tremolo is one of those kind of sunk into the body tremolos. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. And you know, so far playing this... Yeah. I will tell you, it seems to really stay in tune. <laughs> Yeah, 
this dude, it's Fred, right? It's Fred, yeah. What's he up to? Ah, Fred. What happened? I don't know. When did we lose him? I don't know. (laughs) Are you positive you didn't pre-dong him? I am positive. It's one of those things where it's like, Fred would be proud, or continuing in Fred's legacy without actually saying, because he's dead. I see. So, But you're comfortable. I'm comfortable with the dong, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, I guess he would be 103 years old, so... So that was 1946, they start Framus. I should tell you something, Ed. In English, it is the Franconian Musical Instruments Fabrication Company. Yeah. Our man Fred made a portmanteau. Take the F-R-A from Franconian and take the M-U-S from Musical, and you got Framus. That's pretty good. Yeah. And they go great guns. Excuse me, German people, post-World War II. (laughs) 1954, the company grows so big, they have to build a larger factory, Ed. That seems good. So they go to nearby called Bubenruth. I get the feeling you are pronouncing German like I pronounce Spanish. That could very well be. Bubenruth. Is that what you just said? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. This town is very close to Erlangen, where Framus was founded. It has the distinction of having done the exact same thing that Erlangen did. They allowed displaced luthiers to come post-World War II. That's cool. There were 400 people in the town, Bubenruth. Okay. And they voted to allow 2,000 luthiers into the town. Yeah. Bubenruth did that. Erlangen did that. And that couldn't be the only industry that was displaced. Yeah. One of those 2,000 luthiers that was accepted in Bubenruth Mm -hmm. was a guy named Carl. Okay. Last name Hoffner. Not as part of the Framus thing. No, this is just coincidental. Yeah, that's crazy. Town of 400, they bring in 2,000 luthiers? Yeah. Jesus. You got to be cool with these luthier dudes. One more little jaunt to the side. Okay. Two years later in 1956. Yeah. In England... Some kid is given a trumpet for his 14th birthday. Okay. He hates it. Yeah, fuck this thing. Yeah, fuck the trumpet. He wants a guitar. Hell yeah. So he goes and he trades it straight across for a guitar. Okay. He trades it for a Framus. I love this kid. A Zenith Model 17 guitar. Is it one of the Beatles? It is. Oh, really? (laughs) It's Paul McCartney. (laughs) Nice. He was given a trumpet? Yeah, McCartney was given a <laughs> trumpet, but he wanted to sing. So he had a Framus? He did. Still has it today. He wrote When I'm 64 on that guitar. Great. Framus was pretty ubiquitous in Europe. In this time frame, Ed, mid-50s, they were making 2,000 guitars a month. That's not like Chicago boy numbers, but that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And they keep growing until they have to make another factory, Ed, by the mid-60s. Ten years later, they need a third factory. Bad move. If I crystal balled this thing, yeah, right, they are dead within a decade. Time will tell, Ed. I say that only because that seems like the wrong time to be expanding. It seems like the right time to be selling. In the short term, it works out, though, because that cements them as the largest guitar maker in Europe, mid-60s. Wow, no kidding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. German company. Yeah. In Germany. Crazy. German phrases. Ooh. I found a box of German vocabulary flashcards. (laughs) Oh. Die Waffe. Die Waffe? Die Waffe. Dog? Nine. Weapon. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I don't think I'm going to do very good at this game, John. Distraughten. Distraught? Nine. Punishment. Okay. One more. Okay, one more. Give me something that there's a possibility that I would get. I don't know any German. Okay. Das Bett. Oh, the bed? Yeah. Is it? Yes. Das is the in German. I guess. Okay. (laughs) You did great. The first word you asked me, I cannot remember what it was in German, and I also cannot remember what it was in English. So as a flashcard to like burn something into your memory, we failed because I don't remember either side of that. So. I have set up a taste 
test. Ooh. Yes. Listen to this. Right. Okay. And now, listen to this. Do they sound similar to you? Sure, yes. What I have here, Ed, is the new Dan Electro 3699 Fuzz. Yeah. Okay. It is, I don't know if you called it a reissue or reimagining or recreation of the old Fox Tone Machine from the 70s. You have another reissue of that, right? I do. I have not an original Fox Tone Machine, but the first reissue from, oh, this would have been early 2000s. Here's a lowdown, Ed. Okay. There's a guy named Steve Riddinger. Okay. Old Steve. Steve. He makes the Fox Tone Machine in 1971 when he was just 19 years old. Love it. And it became quickly a cult kind of favorite. Okay. It's a rectangular box covered with velvet flocking. Mm -hmm. You could get this thing in all kinds of different colors. Yep. Let me walk you through this. In 2000s. They reissued the Fox Tone Machine. That's what I'm going to start with here. Okay. The settings on it are volume, sustain, octave sustain. That's the kind of upper harmonic stuff. Yep. And the fuzz tone, bright and trebly or bassy. Could you do me a solid? Yes. Could you set that thing straight up 12 o'clock across the board? Yep. Can you do similar settings on the Dan Electro? Yeah. Just to my ear, yeah. the Dan Electro sounds brighter than the earlier reissue. It sounds hotter. Earlier reissue. Dan Electro. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's just a little bitier. One additional thing that Dan Electro has that the original doesn't. Okay. A switch that is a mid-scoop. Oh. I will play a chord and then engage that mid-scoop. I think the mid-scoop actually gets it closer to the original. This new 3699 fuzz, built after the original Fox Tone Machine, invented by Steve Riddinger, came into existence because the current head of Dan Electro is Steve Riddinger. (laughs) Oh, that's pretty good. Crazy, huh? What did you say? He was 19 in... 71. Is he trained in electronics? I don't know. (laughs) Maybe? (laughs) Yeah, sure, sure. That's pretty fuzzy. It is pretty good. Originally, when our man Steve Riddinger made the Fox Tone, you know, it was cool to have a phone number that spelled out something. Oh, sure. So he went looking to see if he could get the numbers that would spell Fox, F-O-X-X. Yep. And it turned out he already had them. That's pretty funny. That's pretty great. So he was like, oh, great. I don't have to do anything. I already have it. Those numbers, 3699. You want to know what happens next, Ed? Okay. 1975. Everyone can rewind a little bit here. What did I say? I'm ready. What's 75? Bankruptcy. (laughs) (laughs) Man. Yeah. It's just so obvious what's going to happen. Expanding in 65. Wrong answer, guys. The market just kind of caved in on itself worldwide. Exactly. What if I told you they went bankrupt in 1975? Oh, wait. What? Let me do another game. Ooh. Someone bought the name and is now reissuing Framus Guitars. Kind of. Okay. In 1995, 
Okay. Framus re-enters the market made by Warwick. Do you know Warwick? Yeah. They're German. Okay. They are led by a guy named Hans Peter. One of these original Framus guys. Fred Wilfer's son. So Hans Peter Wilfer leads Warwick, and he revives Framus guitars in 1995. Sure. How does it play? I mentioned it stays in tune. Yep. The neck feels great. I kind of like this guitar, Ed. We got this guitar from our good friend, Alex. Friend of the show. Super fan, Alex. The best. Was kind enough to loan us his Framus Strato Super. Hey, Alex, good news. Ooh. I think your guitar sucks. <laughs> <laughs> what? Alex had said that I've been very nice to guitars recently. And he's like, oh, I kind of miss Mean Ed. You know, Framus, still not on my radar. This one is in really great shape and it plays wonderfully. I can see where he would have picked this up. Yeah. Not to say they didn't have their low end stuff. Yeah. But this one feels more quality than that. You want to hear something else? Okay. Yeah. I also have here a Mooger Fuger. Ooh. This is called the Freak Box, man. <laughs> F-R-E-Q, like frequency. Yeah. By Moog. It has a VCO on it, voltage-controlled oscillator, a sweeping waveform thing, drive level, and some other shit that it does. <laughs> if I just turn it on to the setting I have now... It's kind of nice, huh? It almost sounds talk boxy. It has a mix knob, so you know you can go from dry to wet. Sure. But if I go all the way down to the dry signal, so it's just the guitar, I could crank that drive knob. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now it essentially turns this into its own sort of overdrive pedal. Yeah. You're just like, let me buy this Mooger Fluger pedal, turn everything off, and turn it into a fuzz. <laughs> Look, another fuzz pedal. <laughs> like <laughs> Look how great this is. <laughs> so is there any more to this Framus deal? Nope. <laughs> but there is more to talk about. I understand, Ed, you've been doing some work on the YouTubes. Claire Peterson, she was sitting here by the pool with me the other day. And she had her headphones in and I was like, oh, what are you listening to? And she was listening to a podcast from YouTube. I don't understand. What do you mean? And she's like, oh, yeah, people just upload the audio of their podcast. OK, is that a thing people do? So, yeah, I started uploading the audio episodes to YouTube with just some slideshows of the guitars you know, if you're the kind of person who doesn't want to go on iTunes or Spotify and you want to actually listen to YouTube podcasts, we have you covered. It's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. What else is on the interwebs? We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube. We're at patreon.com slash the high gain. All of that in addition to our very own website, www.thehighgain.com. And send us a mail, thehighgainpod at gmail.com. Ed, I hope you don't melt. I'm going to go sit outside in 112 degree heat and love it. All right. Bye. Bye.